Hello and welcome back to Custom Gamer. This is part 3 of Deep Down by James Partridge. If you missed part 1 or part 2, click the annotations in the top of the screen right now. Get you all caught up. So this is the final part. I'm going to play through the rest of the mod in this section. And uh, if you've watched the level design analysis, which James Partridge did and kindly let me upload to my channel uh, a couple of days ago, you'll notice that he was talking a lot about the certain map he was looking at. It kind of gave you a wide overview of the level from up above, and then you kind of descended down into its innards to actually explore it and find out what was happening down there. This next part of his mod, Deep Down, really reminds me of that. There's a couple of areas where you get the kind of this grand view of the entire area, and then you kind of... you literally do descend down a lot like the, uh, the map he was talking about in his video. And I think these couple of areas here are probably some of the most accomplished areas in the mod. Aside from that open outdoor area that we looked at at the beginning with the crane where you had to lift the car up, I think these are some of the best areas in the game when, once you're actually inside the mines. So there was some interesting puzzling on the way down here. This, this is something James has talked about a lot in his video as well, just giving the player something to do while they're kind of even if, if they're just in a kind of very linear corridor, just giving them something interesting to do, like blowing up a barrel to destroy a grate to get through. Just simple little things like that, which just James does really, really well in this mod. But this first area here is another great example. So you get a, you get a view through the fence of all these hanging platforms. And uh, you can see fairly clearly that you meant to jump from one to the other. But then things get a little bit more interesting when you try to attempt that. This is a really great idea, having the acid ant line down there to kind of bombard you. I mean, they're fairly inaccurate at this kind of range, but it just creates a little bit of uh, foreboding and a little bit of pressure as well, which is cool for this kind of section. And then if you hang around long enough to notice these things start falling down when you jump on them, it gives you that panic moment, which is really, really great. So I really like this section and the fact that it looks fantastic. I mean. I know I was giving James a lot of crap in the last two episodes for having some fairly simplistic looking areas. But uh, these these mine places here, at, le at least these couple there that we're about to look at, are really, really nice. They look great. There's a great sense of depth to the chasms. The lighting's really great in them. I'm a big fan. Here's another little puzzle. So there are items in this little vent in the wall here, and uh, I guess it's just kind of up to the player how you want to get in there to do it. There's a, a couple of ways you can probably go about this. I figured I might just be able to jump in there by standing on the uh, spools there, but oh, so I'm going to create a little attempt <laughs> to create a little uh, bridge that I can jump onto. It kind of works, just about. There may be simpler solutions, but uh, this is how I decided to attack this. I'm not 100%, but I think this is the only place in the mod that you can find the magnum. This is kind of cool because this turret protects the only way forward, so you have to deal with it sooner or later. I'm not sure if you can actually kill it with the grenades, or they just have to wait for it to uh, go away. <laughs> it's cool that you put the, uh, the wooden bars on the opposite side the door there so you can break them with the crowbar, that's a cool idea. And then of course you've got the grenade box there so that you have an explosive to get rid of them with. That's a nice touch. It just breaks up, because it can get a little bit tedious after a while just constantly breaking down wood plank after wood plank, especially if they're in like every single area. It can get quite irritating after a while. You have to kind of pace that out a bit, but having it having a uh, difference like that uh, just keeps it interesting. And again here, so you've got the wooden planks barring your path, but you've also got a heavy obstacle in your way as well, which you have to use the grab gun to move out of the way. 
So again, it's, ju it's just uh, breaking up the monotony of breaking down planks by putting other interesting objects in the way. I think the only visual gripe I have about these sections is that the ceiling is really flat compared to everything else. I, th I feel like perhaps if there was just a little bit of uh, bumpiness on the ceiling or something like that it would really help to finish off the effect of these tunnels because otherwise I think they look quite nice. Even though they are fairly boxy but that's just kind of the nature of the mine's environment. These areas actually look quite nice to me, it's just a shame that the ceiling is so flat in comparison. So this is really nice, this is something I haven't really seen before. The combine snipers hiding in uh, in minecarts. I thought this was really really cute when I first came upon it. Uh, so it's, it's the standard sniper gameplay. I mean this could have easily just been a kind of sniper just you know sitting behind a wall or something but James saw fit to just introduce it in a really fun novel way by having the minecart slide down there with the rope attached to it with the guy inside. I thought that was really fun. It's just little bits of creativity like that that can just lift uh, a section above just mediocrity into something quite fun. Uh, I think James does a great job of that in this mod, just making pretty standard mechanics interesting by just the way he presents them, or certain gameplay, parts of gameplay in kind of the middle of a section, which just helps to break it up and make it a lot of fun. Now this is the other section I really wanted to talk about, which followed James kind of talk he did in his level design video. And uh, this is my second favourite area in the entire mod, I think. For starters, it looks brilliant. Uh, the detailing here is actually really, really nice. It's sort of a tier above the rest of the mod, I think. And you've got all these little nuggets of gameplay and all these various huts and uh, suspended containers. There's something interesting to do in each one of them. And again, this harkens back to James's talk in his level design video about how he loves to play Half-Life 2 and what he believes Half-Life 2 is all about, which I very much agree with him about. And he's done a great job reproducing that here. So you're kind of exploring this big space, but it's broken up into lots of little nuggets of gameplay which you can experience one at a time. And they're kind of linked together with little interesting connections like things like ladders, things to break down, a little puzzle to, you know, activate a lift or something along these lines. Please die. Anytime. Thank you. <laughs> so progression through this area is fairly linear, although you never really feel it you always have these big vistas to look out over and kind of see the next part of the map that you perhaps go to. I just think that, like I've said, the best the best part about this area is just there's so many different things to do. There's always something interesting in each one of these huts. <laughs> I was a little bit unsure about whether I should drop down here at first, but then I figured, well, the gameplay in this room was opening that up, so I'm sure it's here for a reason. You can see he's got the flares littered about, which kind of they kind of act as a visual aid on where you should be going. They kind of they really kind of stand out in the environment. It's kind of like a moth to a flame kind of effect, where you can kind of draw the player around using something bright and sparkly in the environment. I like the use of the big combine light here, just kind of illuminating the entire cabin. That's very cool. Now because this is my third or fourth playthrough of this uh, mod, I know that there is in fact a poison zombie in here, so I'm just getting rid of him. <laughs> but again, this could have just been a simple platform to activate the lift, but James saw fit to add a little bit of gameplay in here involving the shipping container and the poison zombie. It's just little things like that throughout the entire mod which elevate it to greatness. 
if if I'm feeling picky, which I always am, uh, it would have been nice to perhaps have uh, something hidden in the water down here, like perhaps uh, some pickup crates hidden beneath a girder or something. I mean, who knows? I didn't explore around too much. Maybe there is something down there, and I just missed it. But yeah, that would have been cool. I have to play through it again and have a look in the water. <laughs> the rocket launcher because why not? So again, this could have just been a simple hut to walk through but there's just a, a zombie which pulls the grenades out and tries to get to you with it. I mean, it doesn't seem like that much in the long run, but it's just constantly all these little things which uh, which just serve to spice up the gameplay in this area. It's really, really nice. Uh, visual niggle. You can see the texture repeating on each one of these steps. <laughs> that really is nitpicking, but it really bothers me when I see that. It's, it's such a simple thing to just offset the x-axis on the texture by a little bit on each rung. It's, little things like that can uh, can just really make the map feel artificial, especially if it's in a very prominent, noticeable area like it is there, uh, because it it just makes the map feel very, very artificial when you have repeating uh, repeating textures like that, because you just don't really see that in kind of natural environments. It stands out really. Right, and that is that area completed for the most part. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this area. I think if, if you're going to look at an area of this mod to kind of learn things from, this area is a great place to do that. And of course, the uh, the outside area with the crane at the beginning of the mod is another great area to look at. And of course, we have a nice spectacular ending to this area. Indiana Jones moment. That was fantastic. The first time I played this mod, the pacing of that is brilliant because it drops down from the ceiling and it takes enough time to drop that you you kind of work out what's going to happen in your head before it actually starts happening. You just kind of panic and run backwards. It's really, really well done. That could have just been really, really frustrating if it just instantly came down and crushed you without having a chance to react. But because it takes so long to drop from the ceiling to the floor, it really, really works. That's something that's probably worth talking about. I mean, when you're building a level, if you're just trying to kill the player, then you're actually building the level incorrectly. You shouldn't be trying to kill the player, you should be trying to give the player a good time. And what I mean by that is, obviously including fun combat, but stuff that doesn't just instantly kill you for no reason. Okay, if, you, if you've got a trigger in your map which just instantly kills the player when they touch it, that isn't at the bottom of an endless pit or something, then you probably don't want to be doing that. What you want to be doing is just creating an engaging, fun experience for the player. And if the player messes it up, then sure, he's going to die, but you don't just want to just artificially kill him yourself with a, a hurt trigger or some other kind of instant failure state. So this is kind of an interesting arena. Um, I feel like the space isn't used as well as it could be. There's a lot of dead space in this arena. Um, the initial combat here with the hunters is really fun. Though you tend to spend most of it hiding under the bridge to break line of sight. Uh, once these hunters die, there are a couple of combine that pop out of the tunnel to this side. But again, you just kind of kill them here. There's no real kind of movement around the arena. I would have really liked to see some combine come up behind you as well. 
What could have been really interesting is perhaps Combine coming from one side and a bunch of zombies break into the arena from the other side, so you end up with this giant three-way fight. That could have been really fun in a big space like this. But as it stands, there's just a lot of dead space here. I think it's a well-designed arena. No problems there, I just feel like uh, there wasn't enough stuff to fill it with. It could have been like half the size and worked a lot better, I think. This next area is a great example of just something simple like crossing a bridge is made interesting by the fact that there's a combine mounted gun at the other side and that it's kind of up to you how you want to get there. You can just sprint along the bridge, take a bit of damage, take him out or you can hide behind this thing and push it along with the gravity gun. Now, like I mentioned, that this is like the fourth time I played this mod and I never actually thought to pump this thing along with the gravity gun before. I didn't, I didn't actually think it would do anything but no, it works and you can use it as cover. Although there is a fairly hilarious bug with it, which uh, you're about to experience. <laughs> so, uh, just minding my own business, breaking down these bars, and uh, suddenly I get carried away by the uh, <laughs> by the minecart, and uh, eventually, unfortunately, it does kill you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's the first time that happened to me. <laughs> and then on the reload, it almost gets me again in exactly the same way. So I like the giant combine searchlight there, kind of, whenever you see that kind of blue colour you always know that there's a combine nearby, it's a great way to kind of foreshadow that. And then of course you get these guys which kind of foreshadow that even more. <laughs> I like the fact that Strider doesn't even see you there, it's just kind of taunting you a bit and saying be prepared for what's coming, it's a great way to kind of introduce them. So this is coming up to the last section of the mod, the quote-unquote boss fight, I suppose you could say. We can see her trapped in the force field there. And uh, this area is fairly well presented, so you can see all the uh, energy receptacles here. And of course, of course, the giant text on the screen helps as well. <laughs> I like the way that one of them is encased in a protective barrier there. And then of course this thing's looking at you all the time. Now, this, this area is kind of a, an arena fight. And you've got four different passages you can go down. Each one has a, like a little bit of gameplay nugget and puzzle in it. Um, I like the presentation of it, having the four corridors and four different ways to go. I just feel like each each kind of fork here is perhaps too similar. So it's all kind of go down a corridor, cross a large causeway, and then hit an energy receptacle and go back. They all kind of follow this formula. There's very little deviation between all three paths. I think it would have been quite fun to have a different kind of gameplay scenario in each one with the receptacle at the end as kind of a reward. There could have been some kind of fun gameplay with kind of actually reaching the receptacle. I like the use of the Magnuson devices. I haven't, haven't really seen these in any mod, actually. They probably have been used uh, once or twice, I'm just not remembering, but it's great to see them again. I haven't really used them since episode 2. But yeah, I, th I think by the time you get to the uh, third door, um, it kind of it feels, starts to feel a little bit monotonous. 
But the actual setup for kind of the end of the mod is actually quite fun. It reminds me a lot of uh, Quake actually. The kind of the, the arena setup and the different forks you can go down. Like in Quake you'd be hitting buttons to open up something in the main arena room and here the kind of the buttons are disguised as receptacles. But it's essentially you're doing the same thing. It's very, very quakey. So you've, got the, you've got the blinking white lights above these uh, doors as well to kind of, in case the player's confused about what to do, the blinking light kind of helps to guide them, I suppose. These areas, these areas here are perhaps a little bit under detailed as well, uh, a lot of these rooms feel quite boxy. Again I feel like some kind of supports along the walls and things like that just to break up these large textures would really really help here. There are a couple but not enough I think. Uh, lighting now is great, I love the combined spotlights everywhere, that's really cool. These striders are really, really difficult to hit when they're in their kind of uh, low crouch state. Their body moves really, really fast. It's quite tough to hit. Also, the fact that when they crouch down like that, it activates my arachnophobia. <laughs> it's really creepy. So I spent a whole load of time destroying them with my rockets there. There's probably a Magnuson device right around the corner that I could have used. <laughs> and of course there is. I should have known better. My apologies for the slight skipping here in the video. Um, my computer started having a fit in this area. Uh, nothing related to the mod. Uh, it's played fine plenty of times before this, but there might be a couple of frame drops here and there that you're noticing. Uh, apologies for that. No idea what caused it. My hard drive was going mental during this section. Probably Windows doing something stupid. So again, I, I like how when you destroy the, the combine generators, the lights on the actual uh, enemy unit turn off one at a time another great example that you're actually doing something important. Always need that feedback to show the player's actually doing the right thing. Strider party. Unlucky. Can't go through there. <laughs> oh, so satisfying to do that. So that's all three combine generators sorted out. So we just got the final one in the arena, which was protected at first. Minor visors getting plenty angry. So this is kind of cute at the end where you get to shoot the advisor. Um, again, the, the advisors aren't actually programmed in Half-Life 2 at all, so this is all just uh, done with prop dynamic and uh, various triggers to trigger the various animations and sounds. 
but it's very very seamlessly scripted it feels good to shoot him the feedback's great with the paint animation and the uh, the sound effects feels really good and we can save Alex again visual niggle there the uh, the combined force fields don't swap their skin to the unpowered versions which would have been nice but they hey that's nitpicking <laughs> So yeah, that was Deep Down. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this mod. It's great to see it come through uh, so many beta stages. Um, I remember playing it when it was just one or two maps that James showed me, and it, it was the outside area with the crane. And uh, it's great to see it kind of evolve into this mod, which is really, really fun to play. There's some great pieces of design in it, especially later on in the mines section, so I really enjoyed that. Um, I think there are a couple of weaknesses in it, things like the uh, repetitive uh, environments in the driving sections and stuff like that hurt it, but for the most part it's excellent, I really really enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to what James puts out next. Alright guys, I will see you next time.